Hello, Happy. <laughs> Hello, Hadley and Eliza. So today is Mother's Day and your father's birthday, so I figured it would be a good day to finish Hoboken Chicken Conspiracies. Chicken emergency. I, you think at the end here I could say emergency. So anyways, if you'll remember, so Henrietta has been on the loose for several days now. Um, they hired... Um, a man to come in, a chicken catcher, to come in and find her. And he built a trap, but then he left town, and all they found in the trap was some other animals and things like that, but not Henrietta. So Henrietta is still on the loose. The chicken catcher is gone out of town with the mayor's car, and um, Arthur is looking all over for Henrietta. So here we are, end of the book, chapter 12. Okay. Arthur had received a postcard which said, Meet Dr. Who's, <laughs> Dr. Who, <laughs> Who, <laughs> Who Ting, sorry, these names, these names get me here, at the railroad station at 6.30 p.m. on Tuesday. It was not signed, but it was postmarked Mooseport, Pennsylvania, which if you remember, that's where Professor Mazzucati went, remember, after he left town with his other animals. So he's, that might be him. So anyways, Arthur was there when the train pulled in. An old man got off. He looked remarkably like Professor Mizaki, except that he had a long mustache and kept his hands inside his opposite sleeves of his coats. You are Arthur Bobowitz? The old man asked. Kindly tell me everything about your relationship with number 73. Remember, that was his name for Henrietta. On Wednesday mornings, the mayor's secretary brought a card to the mayor. It said which was his, it was his business card. If you can see that down at the bottom. Oops, let me hold it up there. It's his, bis, it's his business card. Whoa, I got it together here. And it says, Dr. Hu Ting Fong, Feng, poultry locator, not a fake. You may as well send him, you may as well send him in, the mayor said, but I'm not going to pay him a penny. It will, not be it will not be necessary for you to pay me a penny, Dr. Hu Ting Fang said when he had been shown into the mayor's office. I am prepared to locate Dirty Louise, whose real name is Henrietta, also known as number 73, purely as an exercise in philanthropy. That means something you give away to help, to help other people out. I beg your pardon, the mayor said. I mean to say I'll catch the chicken and not charge you anything, the old man said. We already had one chicken expert, you know, the mayor said. Yes, I am acquainted with Mr. De Palma, Dr. Who said. He was my pupil years ago. A young man not without talent, but slapdash and hucklemuckle is his workmanship. What did you say, the mayor asked? He's a jerk, Dr. Who Singh Fang said. What exactly do you want from me, the mayor asked. Only your cooperation, said the old man. Please listen to my plan. Chickens are very sensitive birds. Dr. Dr. Who told the mayor, it is very easy to hurt their feelings. When their feelings are hurt, they become unpleasant and antisocial. A perfectly sweet chicken become, can become a bitter, destructive bird if it feels like it's unwanted. Do you think that dirty do you do you think that dirty Louise, the mayor began? Refer to her as Henrietta, Dr. Who interrupted. It will help you think of her as a person, a misunderstood chicken, and a person. Excuse me, Henrietta, the mayor went on. Do you think Henrietta is a, is a chicken like that? Do you think she feels unwanted and that's why she's kicking over fire hydrants and frightening the citizens? I'm sure of it, Dr. Who said. I have found that Henrietta was for a short time the personal pet of a young boy here in town. His name is Arthur Bobowitz. Henrietta got into a tiny bit of trouble and Arthur's parents insisted that he take Henrietta back. Back? Back where? Where did that bird, Henrietta... Doctor Who in interrupted. Where did Henry and Edward come from in the first place? I haven't been able to find that out, Doctor Who said. And if you want my help, you will have to promise not to look into that side of things at all. I agree. If you can stop these chicken outrages, the mayor said, please continue with what you were saying. Arthur and Henry and Henrietta got to be great friends, but the boy's parents didn't want him to keep her. Keep her. You know how these things happen in families. Henrietta missed Arthur and set out to look for him. Every time people saw her, they screamed and ran away. They called the police, and the police chased her. She was hungry. She felt unloved. Think if it happened to you. You'd be angry, too. 
That is perfectly reasonable, said the mayor, but how will you help us to stop Henrietta prowling at night? I was coming to that, Dr. Who said. First, we have to get in touch with the Bobowitz family and ask them if they are willing to give Henrietta another chance. If they agree, we'll begin a campaign of publicity. We will encourage the citizens of Hoboken to have a friendly attitude towards chickens. We will ask them to wave and smile when they see Henrietta instead of screaming or calling the police or throwing things at her. After a while, Henrietta may try to find Arthur again. If she does, she will be allowed to stay with him, like any normal 266-pound pet chicken. The town of Hoboken will issue her a chicken license, and everything will return to normal. It's worth a try, the mayor said. Oops, just looking for my lemonade. The following day, posters were printed. They showed a boy looking very much like Arthur Bobovitz with his hand around a big chicken. Special notices were printed in English, Spanish, Italian, Polish, and Hindi, asking the people of Hoboken to wave and say hello and smile if they saw Henrietta. The Goodyear blimp was sent for, and it cruised back and forth over Hoboken, towing, towing, <laughs> towing a large banner that read, Chickens Need Your Love. At night, the message was flashed in electric lights. The television stations cooperated. There were special pan, uh, panel discussions on late night shows in which psychologists and guidance counselors talk about chickens needing love and approval. Big white chickens were printed on all of the police cars so they wouldn't upset Henrietta. Arthur's father had been honored when the mayor had come to see him in person. In the, in the old, last year, semi-official mayoral limousine. Remember, he gave the other limousine away to the other guy. He told the mayor that he'd be willing to give Henrietta another chance. The mayor told Mr. Bobowitz that he was a good citizen. There was nothing to do but wait. All of Hoboken had received the word, be nice to the giant chicken. The first couple of nights of the Love Henrietta campaign passed without any sightings reported. On the third night, Hoboken police officer Noonan and Feeney were driving in their squad car. They had just turned the corner of Jackson and Willow, and they were proceeding north on Jackson when they saw something large and white in their headlights. It was Henrietta. She was standing in the middle of the street, facing the approaching squad car. It looked as though she wanted a fight. Noonan and Feeney remembered what had happened to the squad car belonging to Moody and Smith. They stopped some distance from Henrietta and got out of the car. Both police officers had been issued large Idaho potatoes, and they were carrying them. Nice chicken, Officer Noonan said. Nice Henrietta. Want a potato, Officer Feeney said. Henrietta cocked her head, like chickens do, like that. She looked at the two policemen quizzically. The policemen took a step or two forward. Henrietta growled at them. They stopped and put the large Idaho potatoes down on the street. Then Officer Noonan and Feeney got back in their squad car, backed it around the corner, and drove away. The last thing Henrietta saw was the big white chicken painted on the side of the police car. There's the picture that goes with that. The following night, Mr. and Mrs. Adolf Moskowitz were taking an evening stroll. Like most of the women in Hoboken, Miss, Mrs. Moskowitz had a bag of potato chips in her purse in case she met Henrietta. Outside the park on Hudson Street, Henrietta confronted them. Mr. and Mrs. Moskowitz resisted the impulse to scream, run, or throw things at Henrietta. Instead, Mr. Moskowitz held out a bag of potato chips and said, Nice chicken. Nice chicken. Henrietta stepped forward cautiously, took the bag of potato chips in her beak, and ran off into the night. The following day, a group of children were having a game of flegal <laughs> in the schoolyard. They became aware that Henrietta was watching them from behind some garbage cans. They continued the game, but, but contrived to throw the flegel, flegel, you know what flegel is, you two? You ever played it? We'll have to look for it on, on Amazon. They threw the flegel closer and closer to Henrietta until they were playing right in front of Henrietta's hiding place. While they played, they spoke softly to her. Nice Henrietta. Nice chicken. Nobody's going to hurt you. Henrietta stayed during the entire game. On one occasion, somebody threw the flegel toward Henrietta. It landed at her feet. She, put it, she pushed it toward the children with her beak. At the end of the game, the children went home as if nothing unusual had happened. The next morning, people on their way to work noticed that Henrietta was sitting on the roof of the Hoboken Land and Improvement Building. Most of the people waved to her. Good morning, Henrietta, they shouted. Henrietta stayed on the roof, watching people come and go for most of the morning. Then suddenly she was gone. At noon, Henrietta walked through the swinging doors of the, of the Clam Brothers Seafood Restaurant bar, made her way through the lunchtime crowd, and stopped at the free lunch counter. 
She ate some potato salad. Hi, Henrietta. How you doing, Henrietta? The patron said. Somebody brought Henrietta a large root beer. This afternoon, several people saw Henrietta in the deserted playground. She was playing on the slide. People couldn't remember when they had been afraid of Henrietta. She seemed to be very pleasant, well-behaved chicken. They liked her. So here is the kids playing with the flegal. And, oops, let me turn it that way. And the flegal goes towards Henrietta, and then she kicks it back with her beak. So that's a flegal. And then, oh, there's the other picture up there of the woman giving uh, potato chips to Henrietta. Chapter 13. Arthur had just gone to bed when Henrietta appeared on the fire escape outside his window. He opened the window and let her in, hugged her, and scratched her head. Henrietta went to sleep on the rug next to Arthur's bed. In the morning, Arthur's mother made some home-fried potatoes for Henrietta. About Henrietta, His little brother and sister played with her and fussed over her. Arthur's father telephoned the mayor to say that Henrietta had come home. It was just five days before Christmas, and the Hoboken Police, Fire, and Sanitation Departments combined and combined, combined glee clubs had come to the city hall to serenade the mayor. Lots of people, especially children, had come into the city hall to hear the Christmas carols. The mayor came out of his office with Henrietta and Arthur Bobowitz. The crowd cheered. The mayor waved for silence. I am honored to bestow upon Henrietta, belonging to Arthur Bobowitz of this city, the first official city of Hoboken chicken license. The mayor said. He hung a ribbon around Henrietta's neck. Hanging from the ribbon was a bright metal disc. There were letters stamped on it, and it said, City of Hoboken, Incorporated 1865, Official Chicken License, Number One. The crowd cheered and applauded, and the police, fire, and sanitation department combined glee clubs sang, For she's a jolly good fellow. Everybody wanted to shake Arthur Bobovitz's hand and pet Henrietta. Arthur's father was there smoking a big cigar that the mayor had given him. He looked very proud of his son and his chicken, as you can see in this picture. Chapter 14. On the day after Christmas, Arthur gave a show with Henrietta at the playground. All the kids in the neighborhood were there. Henry had been a, Henrietta had been a little rusty after all these weeks of running wild, but with a little patience, she was good as ever on the swing, the slide, and some new tricks, too. Henrietta had learned to jump fences all on her own, and Arthur was able to teach her front somersaults. It was a good show. All the kids said they wished they could have a chicken like Henrietta. After the chicken show in the playground, Arthur and Henrietta went home for some more of Arthur's mother's Christmas potato pie. Then he and Henrietta went out to look for a secluded spot where Henrietta could practice on Arthur's new Christmas roller skates. Oops, I just can't, I just can't turn that the right way. Let's go like that. There they are, Arthur and Henrietta roller skating into the distance. And that is the end of the book. Everybody lived happily ever after. Henrietta's okay, Arthur's okay. And I love you too, madly. And hopefully I'm going to get to see you soon. And we're going to go to the zoo and everywhere else. So uh, anyways, happy uh, birthday to your father and happy Mother's Day to your mother. And uh, I love you all.